good, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Adrian Morrison. Uh, I'm a research scientist at QCAM in Pleasanton, California. Uh, and I, it's my great pleasure today to have uh, Pavel Pohilko from the University of Southern California introducing a new feature uh, that will be in QCAM 5.2, which will be out in a few weeks, uh, Mixed Precision Algorithms for Coupled Cluster Calculations. Um, uh, Pavel received his undergraduate degree from uh, Lomonosov Moscow State University, where he graduated with honors. From there, he moved to the U.S. to do his Ph.D. work with Anna Krylov at the University of Southern California. During this time, Pavel spent a summer working here at the QCAM headquarters, where he worked with Evgeny Epipanovsky, implementing generalized tensor operations in QCAM's tensor library, which allowed him to implement the features that we'll be hearing about today. Currently, Pavel is in his fourth year of his PhD studies at USC. He's working on spin orbit couplings and applying these new features to large single molecule magnets. I'd like to encourage all the uh, listeners here today to uh, ask questions. There is a little question tab on the GoToWebinar toolbar. Uh, at the end of Pavel's talk, I will relay these questions to him. Uh, also, if you come in late, in the next couple of days, this the recording of this presentation will be posted on YouTube, so you can check it out again. And without further ado, I will uh, turn this over to Pavel, who I think is um, excited to speak as much as I'm excited to hear. Okay, great, great. Uh, thanks uh, for kind introduction. Um, okay, I hope you can see my screen now. Looks good. Okay, great. So today I will talk about single precision uh, in uh, correlated methods, specifically in the couple cluster and the equation of motion couple cluster methods. So, uh, so I will start uh, with the background and motivation why we are interested in single precision and what it is. Uh, I will talk uh, what it can gain and uh, what we uh, can lose when we uh, switch to single precision or when we uh, combine different types of precision. And then uh, I will um, I will show which methods we implemented in QCAM, which, feature, which features uh, uh, we support in a single and mixed precisions. And uh, uh, I also will spend time on how to use them and uh, show uh, typical usage cases. So generations of programmers uh, have been told that double precision is fine, uh, just use double precision, uh, it works fine, it was, works well, but uh, uh, if you do so, uh, some bits are not used properly. So, uh, so they are wasted. It is a waste of memory, it is a waste of power, uh, and it is a waste of time. And maybe we should uh, uh, take a closer look on what precision we need in uh, uh, quantum chemical calculations. So uh, IEEE standard defines what is known as double and single precision. Double precision uh, has uh, uh, 64 bits by IEEE standard. And those bits go to, to a sign, exponent, and significant. The uh, numbers in floating point uh, format are represented uh, in scientific notation. Uh, it is one point something. So this, uh, this beginning is, uh, is a significant and uh, uh, two goes to exponent. Um, so this large. Uh, amount of bits for exponent in double precision allows uh, to have a very uh, high dynamic range of numbers. So double precision allows uh, to represent very small numbers or very large numbers. So this is the uh, minimal number uh, shown here is 10 to the minus uh, 300 something. It is extremely small and this is a uh, uh, way smaller than the typical number that we need in, uh, in quantum chemistry. Uh, we have, a, in QCAM, we have a, a finite thresholds and the tightest, uh, for example, the tightest integral threshold that uh, I used was 14 
and uh, we don't keep numbers smaller than this threshold. So uh, clearly, uh, these small numbers is a huge overkill, and uh, we can cut uh, exponent because uh, we don't need all the bits and the exponent and double precision. Uh, double precision gives uh, 16 decimal places uh, of precision, uh, which is uh, good to keep in mind. Uh, so single precision is twice smaller. Uh, it has uh, 32 bits, and these bits are distributed on sign, exponent, and significant in uh, similar way how it is done for double precision. There are uh, eight bits for exponent and single precision, and it allows to represent uh, quite small numbers. So this is the smallest uh, number in a single precision, and it is uh, of the order of 10 to the minus 38. So it is still very small, so we can represent small numbers, uh, which, which we need in single precision. And uh, and uh, single precision uh, has a smaller significance, and uh, it gives uh, seven decimal places of precision. And uh, this will be important uh, further, and I will uh, go back uh, to, to the number of digits of precision a few times in my talk. So why why do we interested in uh, in single precision? Because Single precision allows us to store twice less data, so we have uh, uh, we have easier memory requirements for that, and uh, also it allows us to speed up uh, calculations. On CPUs, we can achieve uh, double speed up. On GPUs, it can be larger. Uh, uh, many algorithms can be redesigned to work to work in mixed precision, such that uh, the error does not accumulate or numerical error accumulates very slowly. And finally, if we look at thresholds that we use in uh, quantum chemical calculations, uh, they can be compatible uh, with a single precision calculation. Surprisingly, single precision were not uh, very thoroughly investigated uh, before. There are works on MP2, uh, th there are estimates for parenthesis T, um, uh, there are a few other papers, but we uh, decided to explore this area. Maybe we can uh, get something from it. So we looked uh, at this last paper, uh, which presents a cleanup idea for couple cluster calculations, and uh, uh, we decided to implement it in QCAM for CCSD. And this is how the algorithm looks like. So we start from integrals uh, in double precision. We do uh, integral transformations in double precision. Then we switch uh, to single precision. So we convert all the uh, integrals to, to single precision and solve CCSD in single precision. We converge, uh, and then uh, we uh, convert the amplitudes to double precision and solve equation in double precision. So typically, uh, and, and we reach the result uh, of double precision quality. And typically, uh, the number of these uh, cleanup iterations in double precision uh, are very small. So it is uh, uh, two iterations in, in uh, most cases. Um, so for that, uh, we looked uh, at models uh, in QCAM and modified them. Uh, in order to incorporate uh, single precision. So we, uh, we generalized tensor uh, operations uh, in lip tensor library uh, and uh, also changed uh, the interface accordingly in, uh, in other models uh, to accommodate it. So this is how the uh, workflow, the calculation looks like uh, from the output perspective. Uh, so uh, the CCSD iterations start from single precision. Uh, it goes, so this is a water dimer, dimer molecule. So uh, six, six, uh, the first six iterations are done in single precision. Uh, it converges, and then the result switches to double precision, and it quickly converges in double precision. Um, uh, so, theoretically, with this setup, 
uh, we can uh, gain uh, speed up uh, less than two because uh, uh, we can uh, because we still have some amount of uh, iterations and double precision. So um, for water clusters, the uh, performance uh, the performance for water clusters is, is shown here on this graph so there is a theoretical estimate in uh, black dots and uh, uh, the real wall timings are in blue dots so as you can see for very very small uh, jobs the speed up is not very large but uh, as the cluster grows uh, the speed up becomes more and more close to the theoretical estimate uh, so the performance is quite good, but uh, uh, still do can we can we eliminate this cleanup iterations and uh, get uh, even larger speed up? Uh, it came out that yes, we can. So uh, if we just remove uh, the cleanup step and do the full CCSD in single precision, uh, we can get very good numbers. So these are the results for G2. Uh, set and uh, I show mean average error and standard deviation in in different uh, basis sets. So G2 set has uh, over a hundred of different molecules of different nature, uh, different sizes. So it is quite uh, representable. And this, as you can see, the errors are smaller than one uh, joule per mole, uh, while the typical uh, CCSD threshold. Uh, which we uh, have as a default and you can stand to the minus six by energies and that corresponds to uh, two with a half joules per mole. So uh, we, we see that uh, with pure single precision, we can get uh, errors which are less than the typical convergence threshold in CCSD. And so we see that this error doesn't grow significantly if we uh, consider larger molecules or if we consider larger basis sets. So we can safely run most calculations in single precision. Um, this is uh, an example uh, of, uh, of larger systems. So there are three nuclear bases. Uh, time and time and uh, uh, and adenine. Um, uh, I show single precision, double precision, and total energies. And as you can see, the error is uh, is small. It is uh, 12 joules per mole, while the um, typical thermochemical error is uh, one kcal per mole. So it is uh, a completely other order of magnitude. So we can use uh, single precision in this case as well. Uh, we can use it for properties. So uh, these are dipole moments, and I compare dipole moments computed in single precision and in double precision. So uh, most uh, uh, most cal calculations uh, looks like uh, uh, here on the top of the table. Um, the numbers are the same. Uh, in single precision and in double precision, and it is hard to find uh, the, the difference within the number of digits that uh, you can print. And uh, after a while, I found so, such example. It is uh, an uh, intermediate uh, of uh, oxygen addition to uh, to ethylene. Uh, it is an open shell system, and for the singlet state, uh, CCSD iterations take a lot of uh, 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 so, so CCSD converges very slowly, and there are a lot of uh, CCSD uh, iterations uh, to converge. And uh, from that, we can get a small difference in dipole moments between single precision and double precision, but still, this uh, difference is, is, is negligible. So uh, uh, we can use. Uh, T amplitudes, uh, lambda amplitudes, and single precision to get uh, properties. And also, we can compute intermediates and density matrices in uh, in single precision. Uh, now, what else can we do? We can go and look at uh, excited states. We can uh, we can run uh, EM equations in single precision, and uh, uh, I show two examples. 
uh, on the left, uh, it is a Eurosol molecule in uh, different basis sets for different states. Uh, some states uh, here represent uh, valent states, uh, singlet and triplet states of different symmetries. And in the diffuse states, in the, in the diffuse basis set, uh, there are also states uh, of uh, Rydberg character or partial uh, valence of Rydberg character. And uh, uh, how you can see from uh, what you can see from this graph is that uh, for the states of different uh, nature, uh, we have uh, the same magnitude of errors. So we have uh, um, uh, up to two joules per mole uh, errors and total energies of the excited, excited states, which is again way smaller than the accuracy of the methods that we use. Uh, we can look at uh, a stronger correlation. So this is a biradical system. It is a D uh, dihydroaniline molecule. Uh, and uh, uh, we can run uh, EM spin flip on it and look at uh, uh, closed shell and open shell states. Of, uh, and as you can see, the errors are about of the same order of magnitude, uh, one to three joules per mole. Um, we can go further uh, and, uh, and run geometry optimization in single precision. And it, it works. It works fine if we compute analytic gradients. Um, we run it uh, first. We started on benzene molecule, and then we uh, optimize the optimize the whole G2 set and compared the errors and bonds. And the errors are very small. Uh, they are way smaller than method er method errors, and they are way smaller than the convergence criteria in QCAM. Um, so we can safely run geometry optimization and single precision as well. Uh, in our group, uh, we use single precision in uh, many calculations that we run. And this is a typical example uh, of the systems uh, we're interested in. It is a single, uh, a single molecule magnet. Uh, it has two copper atoms. Uh, and uh, recently I ran geometry optimization for it with Kaleski in single precision. And it didn't show any numerical problems with that. So overall, uh, we have uh, multiple features uh, in ccm 2 model support uh, single precision. And uh, this is a summary of them. So both uh, canonical and uh, Orion Kaleski uh, versions support single precision. Uh, we have single and uh, mixed precision algorithms for T and lambda amplitudes. Uh, we have, uh, we can compute intermediates, density matrices, a square in single precision. Uh, also, we have right and left vectors for equation of motion coupled cluster and uh, M and P2. Uh, methods in both in single or double precisions. Uh, amplitude response equations are also generalized such that there, uh, uh, there is a single and double precision variant. Um, it is useful for geometry optimization of the excited states. And uh, uh, Ilya Kaliman uh, recently implemented uh, uh, mixed precision parenthesis D correction to CCSD, which works very well. And more things are on the go. So a few more people joined the development, and hopefully there will be more features available uh, in single precision and QCAM. So, and from that, let's go to the practical aspects of how to run it. Uh, and what to expect. So this is a typical case when single precision calculations do not converge. So this is a Eurocell molecule, uh, CCSD in a small basis set. And uh, so, so it is a, an innocent system in an innocent basis set. But what happens uh, is the following. So iterations go. Uh, they converge smoothly up to uh, about 10th iteration. 
and then uh, and then it starts uh, roaming around the same value, uh, so it, it doesn't converge. And this happens because uh, uh, I used two tight convergence criteria here. Uh, single precision uh, can represent uh, seven decimal places of precision. And what does this mean? Uh, if uh, the correlation energy is one Hartree, uh, it cannot represent uh, uh, small changes of energies uh, which are added to this one Hartree because of rounding errors. So uh, I shouldn't set my convergence criteria smaller than 10 to the minus 7 for this case because uh, uh, those calculations will not converge. Uh, from practice, uh, we see that uh, uh, 10 to the minus 6 uh, convergence for energies and 10 to the minus 4 for amplitudes uh, is fine for all the calculations I run over the year. So I would uh, recommend uh, using this convergence criteria for a single precision. Uh, 10 to the minus 7 can be a little bit risky if you have uh, a large system because the correlation energy can be uh, large, but 10 to the minus 6 se seems to be fine. So um, currently the setup for single precision uh, looks, uh, looks like this. So there are several parameters which control the flow of the calculation and uh, uh, each step uh, of the calculations can, can be tuned by user. Uh, for example, CC single prec uh, keyword controls uh, in which precision uh, CCSD equations will be solved. Uh, it, they can be solved in double precision, they can be solved in single precision, or they can solve. Uh, they can be solved in mixed precision. We, we implemented a clean up version for them. Uh, the user can set up uh, uh, separate uh, conversions for single precision and for double precision, which is relevant for uh, clean up version. Um, also, what do we do with integrals? Uh, if we uh, want to have a clean up. Uh, we need to store uh, integrals in double precision, uh, but uh, uh, if we don't need that, and if we want to uh, run everything in single precision, we don't need double precision integrals, and uh, we can erase them, and uh, uh, this keyword is uh, just for them. Um, we can compute intermediates and density matrices in single precision, and we can run UM in single precision. So these keywords uh, are tunable, they're independent, and the user can really control uh, calculation, the workflow of the calculation in single or mixed precision. So uh, there are a few, a few things that the user should be aware of, uh, and these are finite field, uh, finite field and finite difference calculations. So when, when the uh, step size is too small, uh, the differences in energies uh, computed uh, or gradients uh, computed uh, at uh, uh, slightly distort geometries uh, are very small and uh, uh, sometimes uh, are not absorbed in the noise from single precision. So, so they are way too small and single precision just kills them. And this is what happens uh, here in this example uh, for benzene molecule. Uh, so double precision gives uh, reasonable frequencies, but uh, single precision uh, blows up. It gives uh, uh, imaginary frequencies, uh, but uh, some other frequencies are fine. So the way uh, to solve it is to apply large distortions uh, such that the differences in energies are larger and uh, we can go uh, over this uh, noisy regime uh, and uh, the results the frequencies in double precision and in single precision are almost identical in this case. Um, and finally, finite field calculations. Um, QCAM has uh, a, a new model, uh, it's called T-Rex, which allows uh, to run uh, finite field calculations within Romberg procedure. Uh, it uh, scans 
uh, fields of different intensity of different magnitude uh, and uh, and uh, it uh, calculates derivatives uh, for different field strengths and uh, from them uh, it uh, runs Romberg iterations to uh, to to clean up the numbers from the uh, contamination of uh, high derivatives. So these are the dipole moments. Uh, as you can notice, the dipole moments in single precision uh, have uh, larger errors. The errors are larger than in case of uh, analytic uh, calculation of uh, dipole moments, but uh, still it is acceptable. Uh, and let's let's go further. Let's try to break it. Let's go to high derivatives. Uh, we can look at um, uh, static polarizabilities, uh, and as you can notice, the error increases, uh, and it is already around the border of of of, of applicability. Um, so in this example, they are still fine, but they are kind of on the border. Uh, if we go further, we can we can differentiate it one more time. Uh, we can look at first hyperpolarizabilities, and uh, uh, this gives uh, large errors in single precision. But why is that? Uh, because uh, uh, the field strength uh, is not large enough uh, to go uh, from the noise regime to uh, to, to, to something more appropriate and uh, we can see that if we look at the strongest field in this in this sequence uh, of, uh, of in this geometry sequence that we used uh, we see that uh, the hyperpolarizabilities are fine in the, in the strongest field so this is something to keep in mind that uh, single precision uh, so if you if you want to use uh, finite differences in single precision, you should apply larger step size in terms of he uh, if you are interested in Hessians, and you should apply uh, larger fields if you want to run finite field calculations. Uh, to sum to sum up, uh, single precision can be used for ground and excited states, uh, for energies and properties can be used for geometry optimizations with analytic gradients, and it can be used for finite difference or finite field calculations. But certain uh, care should be, so certain attention, attention should be paid uh, to the magnitude of distortions that you use, uh, step sizes and uh, field strength. Uh, if you want uh, to see more details about the algorithms, about the analysis, uh, you're welcome to look uh, at our recent paper that we published. Uh, and uh, most of the information that I presented is available uh, there. So from that, um, I would like to acknowledge our group, which was very supportive, uh, Evgeny Epifanovsky, who taught me how to uh, code in, uh, in Leap Tensor and who guided me through the code and it was an important part of this project as well. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have them. Thank you, Pavel. Uh, it's really interesting work. Um, if there are any questions from the audience, uh, again, feel free to enter them in this uh, question box here and I'll relay them to the speaker. Um, but I guess in the meantime, I, I was wondering, uh, clearly this, this works really well uh, for a couple cluster methods and that, that's your, your expertise, but have you thought about extending this to other um, parts of quantum chemistry, SCF for instance? Um, so uh, there are works, uh, there are papers, there are papers on uh, SCF, on Hartley Fock and DFT. Yes. And it is explored a little bit better than uh, correlated calculations. And uh, uh, it is a little bit more difficult to do. So because uh, the numbers in uh, ACF uh, vary a lot. So there are uh, large numbers, large, large integrals, uh, and there are small integrals as well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and, and it is more sensitive to 
to accumulation of numerical error. So here uh, in, uh, in our examples, we see that uh, uh, error accumulation does not happen uh, uh, either at all or uh, does not happen at the, uh, at the scale that we should worry about that. Um, so we see that the errors of, in energies that we get really correspond to the uh, errors that we should expect uh, from using a single precision. Uh, but in, in SCF, the error accumulation can happen. And uh, uh, when it happens, it uh, drives away from the solution of SCF. So once the iterations go, uh, the error accumulation happens. So certain amount of uh, error cor correction should be done. And there are, uh, there are, there are papers from Todd Martinez uh, who who is an, in, an expert in, in, in this field, how to do mixed precision calculations for SCF calculations. Uh, and there are some interesting ideas there. For, uh, for MP2, probably can be done in an easier way because uh, MP2, uh, so, so there are papers on MP, how to do it for MP2 and uh, it looks like uh, pure single precision for MP2 should be good enough to have it. I see, yes, that, that makes sense. Um, okay. So this is probably uh, a, little, a little crazy, but I, I asked because um, uh, these I guess machine learning is all the rage these days and uh, it's kind of popularized even uh, smaller precision formats like half precision is there any any hope in, in taking advantage of some of the hardware uh use for that stuff that, uh so that, so, so 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 at the moment so there are there are several problems with half precision at the moment uh, so half precision is supported uh on modern modern cpus but uh, it has a very very limited support i would say so okay. uh, only operation that's uh, that that i've seen uh implemented is a vectorized conversion so uh, there is a fast conversion from uh, half precision to single precision and back uh, so it is a vectorized instruction uh, so there are operations like that and uh, uh, and uh, uh, it is done primarily for applications uh, which uh, need uh, uh, some storage. So uh, if you want to store a um, uh, large amount of uh, data and you don't really uh, worry about the type of precision uh, that, uh, that you need, then you can use half precision to store data. And so when you uh, actually want to operate with this data and do some operations, you quickly converge it to single precision and do iterations uh, and do something, something in single precision. But it seems to be working, but uh, uh, the problem is that uh, it is not very well supported uh, at anything else. So if you look at uh, BLAS, uh, I had very hard times finding any libraries uh, which uh, which have uh, some metrics operations implemented at least in in this uh, um, in this in, the, in, in this fa fashion such that. Uh, they consume matrices in half precision, convert them internally in single precision, and implement efficient uh, linear algebra operations in uh, single precision and convert back. So, if something like that uh, would exist, it would be very interesting to explore this area. But it is okay. a little bit too, too, too new uh, at the moment for that. I see. Yeah. Okay. So it's not, not mainstream enough yet, but. but... Sounds like there's potential there, maybe in the future. Uh, we've got a question from an audience member, and uh, so uh, can frequencies be computed in single precision? Uh, oh yes, 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 they can, they can, uh, absolutely. So, uh, and I show them here. So uh, I show that uh, if you if you pick uh, if if you pick uh, 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 a step size such that you go over this noise region, then the frequencies are totally fine. So I show the lowest frequencies uh, here, and you see that there is no difference uh, between double precision and single precision frequencies for most of them. For some of them, there is some small difference, but it is within the uh, error bar that we expect from 
find a difference calculations with frequencies. So absolutely. So just uh, uh, keep in mind that the two small step size, uh, as shown here, can uh, mess up the calculations. But uh, if you worry about that, you can use the cleanup version. It still uh, if it still will give a decent speed up, and uh, uh, and you may not worry about that. Okay, so uh, the n numerical frequencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, another question. Um, yeah, this is a so a particular uh, property here. Uh, can two photon absorption cross sections be computed in single precision? Um, uh, so one of my collaborators, uh, Koshik Nanda, uh, is working on that. Uh, we will see. We, we don't know the answer yet, but we will see. Okay. There are no more questions. Um, we'll move to close the, the webinar here. Uh, if you have questions later, uh, feel free to contact me. Yeah. Probably get you in touch with Pavel if if necessary. Um, I would like to thank all, I would like to thank Pavel, first of all, for his, his great work um, and his very interesting talk about it. It will be available in QCAM 5.2, which will be out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, very exciting release, quite ambitious, a lot of new features. I also want to thank uh, all the attendees for listening and participating. If you came late or you want to watch this again, it will be posted to YouTube uh, for the next few days. Um, and you can find uh, our YouTube channel from our website over, uh, over here. There's a list of all our webinars, and each of these will link to YouTube. I also encourage you to check out uh, our instructional materials. These can be used for teaching or just for learning uh, some introductions to, to QCAM features. Uh, thanks again to everyone for listening. Um, and this concludes our webinar for today. We would like to thank Paolo Tahuko for his excellent presentation, as well as Dr. Adrian Morrison for organizing, running, and moderating this webinar. We also invite you to visit us on Facebook. Thank you for your participation, and see you at the next webinar.